Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I am here with a new set of video presentations in which I have come up with set of four video presentations in which I am going to demonstrate the art of making a scleral tunnel and the bimanual way of prolapsing the nucleus out of the capsular bag. This is Dr. Prashant Shukla and today I am going to demonstrate a few problems which I encountered in my early days uh, while I was learning SICS. By this time the rexis has already been done through the side port and I have made a partial half to one third thickness scleral groove and the ends of this scleral groove have already been marked using a crescent. Now the crescent is uh, entering the corneal stroma. The bevel of the crescent is slightly moved upwards so that we do not have a premature entry. It is always a good idea to hold the eye at the limbus and try to pull the eye slightly downwards so that the bevel always remains up. The tunneling is started in a wriggling motion of the crescent and then the tunnel is extended sideways. The point to note here is that the inner lip of the scleral tunnel is wider than the outer lip. The bevel of the crescent should always the blade should always be upwards then we would not have a premature entry and it has to be avoided at all times. Now is the time to enter the anterior chamber and the anterior end of the scleral tunnel is marked and the blade is dimpled down slightly and the tunnel, tunnel is enlarged. So always when you move forwards you cut the uh, inner lip just to have a very smooth uh, parallel to the limbus incision. This is how we make the scleral tunnel. Here is another case in which a half to one third scleral thickness groove is made, a frown incision is made using a lens tip blade. Now again the eye is slightly moved downwards and the edges of the incision what we have made they are marked using a crescent slightly by slightly just entering into the tunnel. We have not yet started making the tunnel, we have just we are, we are just localizing the ends of the wound and now we are going to start from the middle the blade is slightly tilted upwards and wriggling motion about 1.5 to 2 millimeters into the cornea and then the blade is moved sideways. S the, there should be smooth movements of the blade not rugged movements and try to be in the same plane of the scleral tunnel because we want to have a smooth tunnel not rigid margins. The inner lip is wider than the outer outer incision. Outer incision size is about 6 millimeters and internal would be around 7.5 to 8 millimeters. Similarly, the blade is the is tilted, tilted, is tilted upwards and the scleral tunnel is created on the other side with scleral pockets on either side, both left and right. Here I am slightly increasing the incision wound considering the size of the 
nucleus now a 2.8 mm sharp bevel up keratom is used the anterior lip of the uh, scleral tunnel is marked and we are cutting while we are moving forwards so as we have a almost parallel incision to the limbus this is how we open the tunnel on both the sides here is another demonstration in all in all these cases the rexis has already been done through the side port similarly in this case also a half thickness scleral incision frown shaped is, is made with the help of a crescent blade i am just marking the incision ends so that we have a smooth tunneling and not rugged margins of the sclera here we here have marked all the ends and now in the center with a wriggling movement of the blade slowly the cornea has ended about 1.5 to 2 mm and now i am creating the scleral tunnel on the left side here i am planning to have a 7.5 to 8 mm internal lip scleral pockets have been created similarly on the other side the blade is moved slowly with slightly upward tilt so that we don't have a premature entry the beginners find it slightly intimidating difficult to avoid premature entry this is the way you can avoid the premature entry into the entry chamber which is very important now i am opening the tunnel 2.8 bevel up keratom is used slightly there is a blade is being dimpled down into the ac after marking the inner lip and similarly it's been opened while moving forwards this is how we make the scleral tunnel i'll demonstrate one more video another case again frown shape incision is made i am purposely moving the eye downward so that i get a better view of the site of incision usually the cautery is not required once you made the incision again with the help of a crescent i'm just marking the ends of the incision there is no need to enter the crescent hole into the wound just slightly about a few few millimeters and this is how you get to know whether you are in the in the correct plane of the sclera or not because once you enter the crescent you just see the crescent through the sclera then you get an idea that you are in the correct plane and we enter about 1.5 mm into the corneal stroma and we move sideways slow movements care should be taken that the bevel should always be up it should not it should not be parallel to the iris because if you keep the crescent blade parallel to the iris you definitely have a premature entry and once you have a premature entry then issues of iris prolapse are much more evident during the surgery and the and and the surgery can be complicated and you you can have problems in subsequent steps similarly it's been uh, extended on the right side one can hold the tunnel also if you want for making the incision
Similarly, the AC is entered by marking the internal lip as explained in the, in the previous cases. Care should be taken that you have a very smooth and a incision which is parallel to the. Now I am going to demonstrate how to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag using two Sinsky hooks. One Sinsky is used to just push the nucleus slightly downwards and the other Sinsky hooks the equator and then the nucleus is wheeled out of the capsular bag. It is a very good technique which can be employed very easily in cases of weak zonules and even in small pupils because when you have two instruments the iris can be easily easily maneuvered. Again one Sinsky pushes the nucleus slightly downwards and the other Sinsky hooks the equator and with the help of both the Sinskys one can easily wheel out the nucleus. One more case, one Sinsky pushes the nucleus slightly downwards, the, the left one pushes the nucleus slightly downwards, the right one goes under the uh, anterior capsular margin and wheels out the nucleus so easily. Even the biggest of nucleus with zonular weakness can be just wheeled out so easily without causing any stress to the capsular bag. Again this is a very hard grade nucleus. The axis should be of the appropriate size 5.52 given 6 millimeters. Again the same technique is employed. The nucleus is slightly pushed downwards and the other Sinsky hooks the equator and it is wheeled out of the capsular bag. One can notice the size of the nucleus. I hope you all like the presentation and I hope it is going to help you during your surgical learning. Thank you so much for your patient hearing.